All right. So all day, I didn't get a word. And then, just now, Abba gave me a word. The only word I got today was, um, the only thing that stuck in my spirit was where Abba said, um, he was saying about the widow with, uh, with her few coins, and she put in all that she had. It didn't seem like much to everybody who had more, but whatever she gave um, was all that she had. And Jesus said she put in more than anybody who ever gave more than that, but they just gave uh, what they could spare or their scraps. So that, that's what stuck in my, uh, in my spirit from today. And just now, Abba gave me Isaiah 42. He was speaking to me and I was crying a little bit and I was talking to him. And um, let me read it. Behold my servant. I just started. Come on. Well, I am in black, so they like this. Anyway, you all, they have a lot of mosquitoes outside if you see how much mosquitoes. It's ridiculous. But it is what it is. So, behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighted. I've put my spirit upon him. He shall bring for judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he has set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness and will uphold will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for covenant of the people, for light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord. That is my name and my glory I will not give to another neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth, ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein. The isles and inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kadar do inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time held my peace. I have been still, and I refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will cry, destroy, and devour. At once, I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. I will make the river islands and I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in, path, in paths that they have not known. 
I will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them, and not forsake them. They shall be turned back, and they shall be greatly ashamed, that trust in graven images, and that say to the molten images, Ye are our, our gods. Komenji. Hear you deaf, and look you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? So, blind people are seeing better than seeing people, okay? Seeing many things, we're talking about physically blind people, are more spiritually inclined than those who have their physical eyesight. Spiritually hearing people are better than those who have physical hearing. And it says, Seeing many things, but you observe not. Opening the ears, but he hears not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in walls, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for prey, P-R-E-Y, and none deliver for the spoil, for a spoil, and none says restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hear or hearken for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? That's Jesus. For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he has poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about. Yea, he knew not, and it burned him. Yea, he laid it not to heart. So when he was speaking to me, I could feel him. Especially when he said, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighted. As Jesus was on the earth, so are we. Therefore, when the prophets are prophesying about him, something should resonate with our spirit. Because greater is he inside than he than he was outside, so when we walk like Jesus, and we talk like Jesus, and we seek after the things that Jesus thought about, then whatever, like how Isaiah is describing him here, is as if the Lord selected one. Just like Father selected us, Jesus. So, and then he says, I've put my spirit upon him, indeed. And then it says, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Indeed, just like a Paul, we are on the Gentiles, right? And it says, he shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. Remember when Abba Jesus said, I've come to kindle a fire on the earth, and how distressed am I until it is kindled? He came to burn up every tear. When? At the harvest. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. Flax. You know when you say the flax is ripe in its season? He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he has set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. 
thus says God, the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and will give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. And you know what Abba said? You are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. A light placed on a hill above the city, so that all may see and glorify your Father in heaven. To open the eyes of the blind, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison. So everybody who's been captured, everybody who's been trapped, everybody who's been dealing with something, an oppression of the devil, everybody who's been sneered. Behold, I have the keys to open doors that no man can shut, shut doors that no man can open. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, and that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth, yet I go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles, and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kadar don't inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing, and let them shout from the top of the mountains. So remember when Abba said, they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, and he said, if you shut up, even the rocks will cry out. Son of David, behold, the King of David. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. So I claim this. And the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. And he shall cry, ye war. He shall prevail against his enemies. Jealousy for what? Well, there's a godly jealousy that brings forth a fire that's kindled by the Lord. A godly jealousy. Jealous for the things of God. Passionate. Passionate. This jealousy is a good kind of jealousy. This jealousy, you know, is like for our soul perishing. That kind of jealousy. Like when Abba says, my name is jealous. That is my name. I am the Lord. Jealous for what? For the perishing of souls. Jealous that they've been blinded. They've been deceived. They've been seeking after another God. Jealous. Why is his name jealous? Because he made all things. He came and he did what he had to do to give us salvation. He gave us the gift of his spirit and to see a soul that is seeking after a deity, after quote unquote another G-O-D, small G, jealous is his name. So there's a fire that's kindled within against that and that is a godly jealousy, a jealousy for the glory of God, a jealousy for the people that are perishing. A jealousy to see souls magnifying him. You want to see souls, in other words, magnifying him. Giving him the glory that's due to his name. So he said, The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man in battle. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. Rulers of darkness seated in high places ouch and yes they want 
They want souls to perish. They want to destroy the inheritance of the Lord. They want to obscure the plans that he's had to glorify his name. They want to hinder the great things that he set his people for. They want to dim the glory of God if they can, shining in his people. So it says, The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man, and he shall stir up jealousy as a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time held my peace. I've been still and refrained myself. And now will I cry like a travailing woman, like in the tribulation, like right now. Now will you cry? Hallelujah. He says he shall prevail against his enemies. The Lord said to my Lord, sit here at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Trust in him and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So he says, he shall go forth as a mighty man, mighty man of war, lion of Judah. The lion of Judah has gone forth. A lion has roared cannot but prophesy. He has gone forth on the battlefield. The Lord is before me. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man and he shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. Jealous for his glory. It belongs to him. Jealous that people are giving the glory unto others. Jealous that the souls that are supposed to be praising him and casting crowns at his feet are worshipping deities, are worshipping man, are worshipping Satan. Jealous, a godly jealousy. And he says, he shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. Why? Because where there's a jealousy of the Lord, I the Lord, jealous is my name. Jealous is his name. He says, he shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. When a man goes to war, he's going to fight and he's going to win the battle. He's going to prevail against his enemies. And it says, oh, there it is. He shall, oh, he shall cry, yea. Correction, not the cry that you think. He shall give a cry like a lion that roars. A lion that has come to do war and win that war. He shall cry, yea, roar. And he shall prevail against his enemies. Yes, the Lion of Judah never lost the battle and never will. I have long time held my peace. I have been still. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. And refrained myself. And now will I cry like a travailing woman. What? Travailing woman. Like a woman in travail giving birth, like the tribulation that we're in. Now I will cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. When a woman who's giving birth cries, she's going to bring forth that child. She's about to bring forth that baby. And when the Lord says that he will prevail against his enemies, the fire of the Lord inside of his people shall prevail to win the battle. So now will I cry like a travailing woman. You'll push through. You'll birth the baby. Victory must come forth. By the fire of the Spirit of the Lord, it shall Come forth. It shall break forth like the breaking of water. The Lord broke through my enemies like the breaking of water. Like a woman in travail, a water bag burst. Baby's coming. Push. Because after the water bag burst, the baby's coming. 
The water bag might be the tears that are flowing out of your eyes. The water bag might be the realization of you on the battle. The water bag has to be your heart pouring out at its deepest time, at its depth. The, the Lord broke through my enemies like the breaking of water. Come on, somebody, you have to understand that the water bag is what the baby was in. And it says, he shall cry. Yes, he shall roar. The lion has come to do battle. He's not come to mess around. This cry is unto victory. This cry is not unto uh, <laughs> failure. This cry is unto victory. So there be a breaking of the water bag. There be a breaking for through water. Just like when, remember the days of your baptism. When he said, unless a man is born again of the water and the spirit. He shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. That was a promise that was laid on our heads when we broke through the waters. And it says, be baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, in his name, Jesus Christ. When you came forth out of the water, there was a breaking through of the water. It was like a baby that was being born again in uh, through the, the bursting of the water bag. It was like a baby coming out of the womb of heaven. I'm speaking to somebody to tell somebody that the lion has roared. The woman is in travail. She's pushing forth. Her legs are open and she's bringing out the child and the child has to come forth. Whatever that may be, it might be marriage for somebody. It might be conceiving in the womb and bringing for a child. It might be breakthrough. It might be financial favor that everybody wants to say, oh yes, I receive, but they don't want to believe and they don't want to be born of the Lord. They don't want to be born of Jesus Christ. So it might be buildings that have been bounded up, but the Lord is loosing it out. Whatever it is, it's the breaking forth because you trusted. I hear him say, because I have trusted. Ah, because I believed that it shall be unto me as he has said, I receive when you came out of the water. I don't care how much times you were baptized, how many times you came forth out of the water. There was a breaking forth of heaven's womb that said, behold Behold my servant, behold my elect. Just like Jesus, when he was baptized by John the Baptist, and John said, Behold the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. There was a breaking through. It was an announcement that said, I have come forth from the womb of heaven. I've not just been birthed by a human womb, but I've been birthed by a spirit. Spirit that is sovereign, God Almighty, Yahweh, Jesus. I've been birthed by Him. I've been pushed out by Him for a purpose that I will see come to pass. That I will see as I have believed and walked after Him. The fire is falling and it is for you and it is for me. I'm prophesying to myself as I'm speaking. I heard him say there's a breaking forth of the womb of heaven. You see, you could come forth from a woman like everybody did uh, as a human. But when you break forth out of the womb of heaven, there's a light that shines on you. Just like the Holy Ghost came down like a dove on Jesus. He was anointed for a work. He came in the body of Jesus 
Christ through the Virgin Mary, first birth. And then he said, Nicodemus, as a man must be born again by the water and by the Spirit of the Lord, or he will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You could enter into the kingdom of the earth, but to enter through the kingdom to the kingdom of heaven, something's going to glorify God's name. Something's going to lift him up. Like I hear him saying, she believed that it would be unto her as was spoken by the Lord. I believe what was said unto me. He said, I called you as a prophet to the nations before you were in your mommy's womb. I knew you. I ordained you. She pushed you out first. But here I come to birth you a new realm, birth you a new spirit, just like Jesus broke out of the water when he said, do this, come follow me, don't be discouraged and do not be dismayed, I am with you, do not be afraid of them, neither be ashamed in front of them, they who look to the Lord their faces shall not be put to shame. I hear him saying, when Jesus, he came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord rested upon him. When you broke forth out of your baptism pool, I don't care where it was, I don't care who pool it was, I don't care which ocean it was, I don't care where which river or spring it was, whatever church it was when you broke forth. I said when you broke forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in his name, Jesus Christ, there was a light that shone upon him from heaven that said the breaking through has come. Now enter into the kingdom. Why has it been withheld? Why has it been withheld? Because the jealousy of the Lord has to be kindled on the earth. There has to be a, a passion. There has to be a burning. There has to be a roaring of the lion inside. He has to break forth. And when he breaks forth, the enemy shall not prevail. I say to you, you are Simon, but now I call you Peter. Petros, I call you Peter, because upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Soak it up and soak it in. Soak it up and soak it in. Because the Spirit of the Lord is brooding on this earth. And every time a soul goes shh, shh, in the water, out of the water, there's a break and forth of the womb of heaven. Like Jesus was anointed, what well, how? Well, I told you Jesus is God. Of course he's God. But I'm talking about the vessel that he's used. The, the body, the body, the body that he came in. It was anointed. It had enough strength to fulfill the purpose that it came for. I speak into somebody right now that as you were anointed, as you came out of baptism, and there was a baptism of fire, uh, there was a empowering, there was a Quipping, you will not fail. It will go forth. It will be accomplished, says the Lord. I have long time held my peace. I've been still. I wasn't fired up in my people yet. Because the time for the fullness of the Gentiles to come in hadn't come yet. But then suddenly, the earth began to blaze with fire. The earth began to 
to blaze and burn. And all over, all around, you could hear people shouting, Jesus, 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 because there's a breaking forth of the womb of heaven. People are being anointed, they're being empowered, they're being equipped to go forth in their purpose. They shall do great exploits. We shall do great exploits. It shall happen for the glory of God. I believe it will be as is spoken unto me. He has not failed me. He has never failed me. My God will never fail me. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man and he shall stir up jealousy. How many want him to stir up jealousy? If you want the fire of God inside like jealousy, you're jealous for his glory. You're jealous to see, you're, you're, you're just, you have a burning inside to see people worshiping the real God, the true and living God. You wanted to stir up that jealousy. Like Jesus said, I have come to kindle a fire on the earth and how distressed I am until it is kindled. And then when he was about to ascend, he said, behold, it is exceeding, it is, uh, it is expedient that I should go away, that the comforter would come. The comforter has come. When he comes, he shall what? He shall convict of what? Of sin. Bam. That's why we're preaching sin. And we're walking after what? Holiness and righteousness. We're doing our best. Amen. And then what is he, what does he say again? Sin and what? Oh, righteousness. So we're walking after that. And then what again? And judgment. What is judgment? Judgment is standing before the throne of Yahweh Jesus at the end of life. So we are fiery for the thing. We want the thing to be accomplished in souls. We want the thing, the thing. Who does the thing? What's the thing? The conviction of him who Jesus with the holy fire of God, the spirit of the living God. We want it. We want it inside. So it says, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man and a weak man. A mighty man. He shall go forth as a mighty man. Mighty man of war, lion of Judah. He shall stir up. You know, like when Ukrakata Yerebov Sata. You know when the blind man, no, when the lame man, excuse me, I just ate my food. <laughs> this is the, the, the word. So he shall, you know, when he was, um, when they were stirring up the water and the lame man was saying he had nobody to put him in. Well, he's stirring up a pool. And this pool is fire. This pool is fire. It's made of fire. He shall stir up jealousy. What? Jealous is my name. He shall stir up jealousy like a who? Like a man of war. When he's stirring up this jealousy, this jealousy is for his glory. This jealousy is not to see souls perish. This jealousy is to, for the things of the kingdom to break forth. This jealousy is to see prisoners breaking out of their cells. This jealousy, this jealousy is to see people giving Jesus the crown of glory that he deserves. He shall stir up jealousy. Who will dip in it? I said, who will be baptized in it? Who will break forth? out of the womb of heaven who will come true and be dipped he's stirring it up i said he's stirring it up and he shall cry you know this whole week the lions were in well here stop yet he shall cry yea he roars roars like Amos 3, which is a mantle upon this ministry the mantle of the prophets he said hey, when he roars who cannot but prophesy? You can't stay quiet when he's spoken. There is no way, no way that you can stay quiet when he's spoken. He wants to warn the nations. He wants to warn the, the souls. He wants to bring the people into the fire baptism.
I know where he's saying. I have long time held my peace. Which means he wasn't really stirring it up yet. But he started stirring it up. And you know, the people kind of got, they got the, uh, they got the, uh, the realization that when that pool was stirred up, yeah, when that pool was stirred up, if anybody got dipped in it, what would happen? What would happen was healing would happen. Well, I hear the Lord saying when he stirs up this pool, there's a birthing that's coming out, a birthing, there's a fire. That's going to be installed in. There's a fire. I just see in the realms of the spirit baptism pools. Filled with people coming up and out of the water. And fire is their portion. The fire from heaven. It's like if they went in water. And they birthed in fire. I see they dip in water. And they come out in fire. Ah, the Lord is equipping in this hour. And he says I've long held my peace. I have been still. And I've refrained, refrained to stop. I've just, I've refrained myself. But now will I cry like a travailing woman because the baby has to come forth. The baby has to break forth. The baby has to be birthed. It has to come. I said it has to come. I will destroy and devour at once. You see, this destruction and this devouring is like a lion that has come to deal with the enemy. Satan, run. You see, you better run. Satan better run. He better pick up his garment, tie it up, and run. Run with his bundle because the fire has come and the fire is going to blaze the fields because the fire is in front of the soldier. Just like the pillar of fire was in front of Israel, blocking Egypt, and ready to consume the Egyptians that were against Israel, the children of Israel. This fire that's going out will devour demons like, like, a, like a dry flax that catches a blaze and does not produce fruit. That's what this fire is going to do, a flax reed that does not have fruit. This fire is going to go forth and burn it up. Now will I cry like a travailing woman and I will destroy and devour at once. You ever see a woman giving birth? She will take your hand and she will dig her fingers down in it until sometimes you come out bleeding too. Or she will yank the man's hair some women have it easy when they have an epidural or they just, you know, they do a C-section. That's not feeling the process of natural birth. When you're really birthing and something huge has to pass through something small, it hurts like rain. It's like constipation, men. When you're seriously constipated and you're trying to push it out and it won't come out. When that woman has to push that baby there is no negotiation. She has to push, and the Lord will give her strength to push. This woman is in travail. The woman is the church. The woman is the body of Christ. He said, I will destroy, I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills. Every exalted thing must be brought low. I will destroy and I will devour at once. Why? So that the birthing of my people might break forth in this realm. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. If you realize at a harvest time, the fruits... The fruits are taken and the garbage is burnt. He says, I will destroy and I will devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers 
islands, and I will dry up the pools. I will make rivers islands. Huh? Can you imagine a river becoming an island? And I will dry up the pools. So you realize he's not talking about uh, just, uh, just a physical. He's talking about a spiritual, right? I will bring the blind by a way they knew not. And I will lead them in paths that they have not known. He's taking charge. I will make darkness light before them. And the crooked things straight. So where they were teaching garbage, where they weren't empowering the people, where they were just giving a kind of, kind of thing, the Lord says that I will make the crooked things straight. He said the wicked has a crooked path. And when the wicked has a crooked path, and I ain't going to heaven, straight and narrow is the way that leads to heaven. So he says, I will make the crooked things straight. Every single person that has been on the agenda of self and has twisted and perverted and diverted the people from the word of God as they twisted and perverted the word of the Lord. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. He's not going to leave people who've been taught wrong to perish. He's going to, I'm going to read it again. I will bring the blind by a way they knew not. So if they're accustomed to the hearing, the preacher and ignoring and somebody inviting you to church and they're not going and if they're accustomed to hearing a prophet prophesying or believing or if they're accustomed to the witnesses coming and and they don't receive the tracks or whatever. If they don't, if they're accustomed to doing, he said, I will bring the blind. And I see over Jesus in the spirit. And I see his hands putting mud on the blind man's eyes. It was different. I will bring the blind by a way they knew not. And will lead them in paths, in paths that they have not known. So whatever they knew and they rejected, God has purposed a new thing. I will make darkness light before them. And you know when he says it, it comes to pass. Like when he said, let there be light, the darkness had to flee. So, and the crooked things, straight, these things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back and they shall be greatly ashamed like a prodigal son. It's time for them to take a look at themselves in the mirror that they have been evading. Take out the plank from inside of the eyes and our eyes. And then look to take out the splinter out of others. They shall be turned back. Where? I hear your king. Turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images and that say to the molten images, ye are our common G sitting on plastic chairs, gods. Hear you deaf spiritually and look you spiritually blind that you may see. 
who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I sent. So he's sending physically blind people and physically deaf people who can spiritually see and spiritually hear. It's a new thing. Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? Who is blind as he that is perfect? So a blind man physically, the Lord is calling perfect because he's been birthed out of heaven's realm. Kind of like the blind man that Jesus healed, exactly like him. Where the Pharisees wanted to say that he he was not blind or whatever. And they said, oh, this man sinned. He was born blind. No, he was born blind so that the glory of God might be revealed through him. At an appointed time. That's what I heard the Lord saying. Who is blind as he that is perfect. And blind as the Lord's servant, seeing many things, but thou observeth not, seeing they all see, and hearing they all hear. You look to the sky and you say, Wow, there be a storm, wow, it's going to rain. But you cannot look around at the world and the condition of the world and see that Jesus Christ is coming. Seeing many things, but thou observe not. Opening the ears, but he hears not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. So as much as it talks about Jesus, who fulfilled the law perfectly, Blameless, sinless man. And then was sacrificed, crucified, and gave us the good report by his spirit. As much as it speaks of him. For his righteousness sake. Are also those who have crucified the flesh. And lived to the spirit. Who have been birthed. Through the womb of heaven. To the law. And to the testimony. If they speak not. According to these words. There is no light in them. They must always go back to the law. And to the testimony. The spirit of the living God. Jesus Christ himself. Yahweh himself. The I am who I am. God Almighty. He will magnify the law. Not tread it underfoot. And make it on rubble. But this is our people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them sneered in holes. They are hid in prison houses because they sought after Baal. They are for prey, P-R-E-Y, and none delivers for a spoil, and none says restore. They're like lambs being devoured and sheep being slaughtered for the wicked, not for the Lord, but for the wicked. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Here am I. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Time of Jacob's trouble. Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned, 
if our Lord, if the Lord has, if the calamity has come upon a city, has not God done it? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore, he has poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. That's why he said he stirred it up. He stirred it up jealousy within to bring it forth. He had poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. And it had set him on fire round about. It had set him on fire round about. It had set him on fire round about. He is passionate for the kingdom. He is passionate for the souls. He is passionate for the glory of God. He is passionate to bring the crowns at the feet of Jesus. Yet he knew it not, and it burned him. Yet he laid it not to heart until the appointed time. Let's read Isaiah 43, because it goes on. So we have to read the other verse anyway. But now... So we're going to read this again. Therefore, he had poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. He's enough. And it has set him on fire round about. Yeah, he knew not. And it burned him. Yeah. He laid it not too hot. Isaiah 43. But now thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he who formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, and I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. So before, the Spirit of the Lord had not laid it to heart. But now, he set the fire round about and within, like a woman in travail. And it says, but now, right now, here is where in the midst of the, the, uh, the war, because that's what is, it, is a mist. In the midst of the war, there's a birthing out of the realms of the spirit. There's a birthing out of the womb of heaven. There's a birthing that you cannot deny, that you will not deny. I prophesy that there will be a fire round about. There will be a fire within and a fire round about. It's like a blazing fire, like a pillar of fire that is set before the enemy on the back field it is the lion of the tribe of Judah and the justice of the Lord shall prevail and it is oh he said it again oh I hear and hear it it is the that he do this thing it is the oh the words that tip on my tongue father help me it is at the it is the passion not the passion it is the it's at the tip of my tongue. Shall do it, and it shall be marvelous in his eyes. And the shall do it, and the glory of the Lord, and the glory of the Lord, and the 
shall do it and it shall be marvelous in our eyes the glory of the lord has purposed the thing he has purposed the thing and he is birthing for jealousy within his people you're gonna catch it what he's doing in this time it's not that israel has to be afflicted but he's allowing them to be afflicted even us he's allowing to be afflicted that there be a godly jealousy that is burned that is burning in the hearts like jeremiah said his word was like a fire burning in my heart shut up in my bones and I could not be quiet even if I tried it's a passion for souls it is the who can know it it is the glory of the Lord that accomplished the thing who can know it hallelujah Ooh, hallelujah Ooh, hallelujah hold on Verse 2, and here's the assurance. When thou pass through the waters, I will be with thee. Oh, there I go. Get ready to hear the lion roar. When you pass through the waters, we're not talking about walking through a river, but we're talking about Israel walking through the sea. Well, even as the priest did pass through the river. But we're talking about something bigger than that. Say bigger than that. We're talking about the birthing through the water. We're talking about the breaking of the water bag. We're talking about the birthing of the baby from from heaven's womb when you pass through the waters I will be with thee when I read that I saw like the spirit of the Lord just entered whoosh, as soon as he came up out of the water it was like a realm between this earthly realm and the heavenly realm they willingly forget that the earth was made in water and through water it was formed out of water by water they willingly forget that the spirit realm, there's a breaching of the spirit realm by the waters. I see the spirit of the Lord coming through as people are coming up and out. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Hold on. I see something. Not just that we're walking through battles. Not just that we're walking through the heated things of life. But now that we're walking through the fire. Like the Lord stood there and he looked at the enemies. In the midst of the fire. Like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Was one with the fire. Who is a consuming fire of holiness. It could not burn him. Because he was one with them. I said unto you. That as you walk through the fire. As we walk through the fire. How many want to walk, walk with the fire? When you walk through the fire. You're walking with the fire. You're in the fire. But you're walking with the fire. He is a consuming fire. Thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Now literally, it won't burn on you. No, it coming inside of you. I said that fire, that birth, that burden of the fire, it's coming in. For I am the Lord, thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sabia for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight. Since when? Since before your mother's womb. Thou hast been honorable. And I've loved thee. And therefore, I will give men for thee and people for thy life. Hallelujah. Fear not, for I am with thee. And I will bring my seed. I will bring my seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, 
I see the Lord coming on the clouds of glory and I see the four corners of the earth being harvested. I see from one corner to the next. He's calling out to his people and saying, come. We're almost done. I will say to the north, give up. Give up what? Give your people. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. That's what I see. I see the spirit of the living God just gathering people for the great day of the Lord Jesus coming. I see him coming on the clouds of glory from one corner of the earth to the next. And people are coming to him like ants. And then everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. Remember, we're both out of the mother's womb, but we're both out of heaven's womb, out of fire. So when we baptize by water, that's where we receive the baptism of fire. It's a breaching of the spirit realms. So he's saying, for everyone that is called by my name, many I called, but few I chose. Everyone that is called by my name, for I foreknew, and I gave a predestined, and I called, and I justified on the cross, and they believed. And then I glorified. Hallelujah. For everyone that is called by my name, I have created him for my glory. And I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. Amen. That's what he gave to me. That's what that's what he's been birthing out. Do you see how quiet I was all day long? Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Yes, Father, let them bring forth their witness that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true. Amen. Beloved, that's all you wanted to birth what? That's why I was so quiet. Yo, I was like, Papa, you didn't say anything. Yesterday, he didn't say anything. Today, well, yesterday he said, you know, during the night, but today he didn't say anything. And I'm like, Papa, what's going on? Why didn't you say something? And I'm like, I can't, I need it, I need it. And then he just gave me that. What a piece of something. What a piece of something. What a piece of something. So hide it in your heart. I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to take away from it. That's why baptism is important. He said it's the crossing over stage. And you just get revelation. So all who are baptized, probably catching fire right now in the name of Jesus. Because I just caught fire. I just caught fire. You're going to remember the day that you got baptized. You're going to remember the day that you were actually dipped in the water and you breached the surface. I said you're going to remember the day that you got dipped in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in His name, Jesus Christ. And you're going to remember the time you breached the surface. And right there, fire of heaven coming in. Remember, it's no longer on. It's round about. Kindle that fire of jealousy. Godly jealousy. For Him to give Him the crowns. For Him to get the glory of souls. Watch God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, that's what the Lord laid on my heart. You see all the fire that's fallen Sabbath too. Wait. I don't know what to say. I'm just real hungry now. I'm like serious. I have appetite. That's what I heard the Lord saying. That's what he laid on my heart. Had it in yours that you won't sin against him. Um, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what are you waiting on? What? Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that he is Lord and you shall be saved. Pray with me. Say, Father God, I come to you a sinner. I'm sorry that I sinned against heaven and you. Please forgive me for my sin and unrighteousness from the day I was conceived 
to this very day, to the day I ascend to be with you again. Thank you for coming as Jesus Christ and living a perfect life for me, for dying in my place for my sins and unrighteousness, for raising from the dead on the third day back to life to give me victory over this life, death, hell, Satan, this world, tribulation, and flesh. Say, I forsake religion and traditions of men. Say, Jesus, wash me in your precious blood now and fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me with your fire baptism. Kindle that fire of godly jealousy inside of me. Come on. I'm holding your hand spiritually. Come on. Say, I confess you now, Jesus Christ, as my personal Savior and my Lord God. Come into my heart and change me. Say, be shepherd and Lord of my life, and I will follow you all the days of my life. Jesus. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Hold on right there. Hallelujah. Father, this one. You said better saved is one saved sinner that confesses that they need you, Jesus. More than 99 righteous men beating their chest and saying, we don't need that, Jesus. He's not savior. We don't need him. So this one. Let your peace that surpasses all understanding be with them in every situation and circumstance. Let your grace that is sufficient be given unto them to move every mountain in their path. Every single mountain. Every, every, yes, Lord, to serve you and to rise up a living testimony of your power. Let the fear of the Lord be given unto them that cast out every spirit of fear. Spirit of fear to walk in you, Father, and to confess you as Jesus Christ. Spirit of fear that would cause them to not be a witness of you, Father. Let it be cast out. Spirit of fear to operate in your things of your kingdom, Father. Spirit of fear to choose you in every single walk of their life. Let the spirit, let your perfect love cast out the spirit of fear. Let it be cast out now in Jesus' name. So, Father, even now, yes, Lord, we speak it right now that you be led to a Bible-believing person, that you might be well-nourished in the word and stand in the day of adversity. Not fail, not that your faith would fail, but that you would stand and you would choose Jesus all the way. I speak that you be led to a water baptism, that you might be baptized by the water and the Holy Spirit, by a person who have been baptized by the Spirit of living God. Fire baptism, that you might be baptized by the Holy Spirit and receive the outpouring. I speak even now an unction of the fire of God upon you. I speak even now that you would know that if you were the only one in this world, Jesus would have come and died that same horrible way on the cross just to win your love by his love, his perfect love shown on the cross of Calvary, loving you in your deepest, darkest place of sin and giving you the gift of eternal life. Only choose it. I speak that sickness and, and death and disease is cast away from you now bounded up and flung into outer darkness, sealed up, shut, and never, never coming forth again. And I speak by the confession of your faith that angels, yes, yes, Lord, that you would give angels charge to keep them in all their ways, mighty God. I release angels in their properties, angels in their homes, angels all around to keep them in all their ways. Father, even now, I speak that angels are rejoicing in heaven for this one saved person. That is a party in heaven for you. However many are coming, tell us so that we could celebrate with you. Send us testimonies of God's living, breathing power. Hallelujah. In his name, Jesus and Father. Help them to rejoice in their salvation, even when life becomes hard for choosing you, because they're now choosing the kingdom of heaven. Help them to know that if they are violent in their faith, in prayer, in worship, in seeking you, in choosing you, and all will be well. Beloved, beloved. Beloved, beloved! 
You know I'm coming in with a hug. I'm coming in with a hug. A Holy Ghost hug. Come in, come in. We welcome you to the kingdom of heaven. Welcome, welcome in Jesus' name. We love you, we love you, we love you. Welcome, welcome. We welcome you to this ministry. What's the wine? Prophetic International, King of Kings. Hallelujah. We are a people who is led by the Good Shepherd. He is inside, outside, all around, in the ministry, out in the ministry. He's every, he's everywhere. He is he's the one turning the soul from water to wine, natural to supernatural. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to empower you. We're here to stand with you in the body of Christ to declare and decree that he reigns and rules in the affairs of men and that we are spiritual Israel. Amen. We are spiritual Israel grafted in with the people of the land Israel. But everyone, uh, whether land Israel or Gentile nation, we are becoming spiritual Israel. So I welcome you, welcome you. In Jesus' name, we love you, but he loves you more than anyone ever could, ever would, or ever will. He loves you. In Jesus' name, shalom. Shalom. God bless you, brothers. I see you. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. <laughs>